As per Crisil, AUM of non-finance or non-bank finance companies is expected to degrow for the first time in nearly two decades in FY21. Now it also says that housing finance may remain flat or see just a small growth of 1 to 2 percent in FY21. In our ideas for profit today, I'll discuss if it is worth considering HDFC the largest housing finance company at this juncture. Well, HDFC's Q1 FI21 performance, although was impacted by COVID-19, it reaffirms that it would continue to fare relatively better despite the challenging times. Now, HDFC enjoys a leading market position in the housing finance businesses, a relatively better asset quality, diversified and stable funding profile, and also a strong capital position, which will further improve with the proposed capital raise. Now, these trends are partially offset by the exposure to the real estate funding segment and the intense competition in the housing finance segment. Now, while the street's concern on HDFC's real estate funding book is quite valid, given the challenging times, HDFC's strong balance sheet with ample liquidity and more than adequate capital gives it an edge over the peers. Now, HDFC's outstanding loan book grew by 12% on a year-on-year -year basis. HDFC is growing its retail mortgage book much faster than the industry as well. Now, growth in the loan book was led by the non-individual loan book, which actually saw um, a growth of 15% year on year. Now, as Bertha Management during the quarter, HDFC extended short tenure loans to AAA companies or AAA companies. Now, HDFC is uh, amongst the handful of H uh, HFC companies, which is still active in the wholesale market, which has essentially turned into a lender's market where lenders command pricing, underwriting terms and covenants. Now, this should translate into superior profitability for the company going forward. Now, it also reported a net uh, profit of say about 3000 crore rupees in Q1, which is a decline of 5% year on year. The net interest margins came in at 3.1% in Q1, which is a decline of 20 basis points year on year. And this was due to the excess liquidity on the books. Now, HDFC's deposit base increased by a strong 26% at 1.4 uh, lakh uh, crores. And definitely many more small and mid-sized private bank companies are behind it. This highlights the HDFC's funding strength as well. Now, the overall gross non-performing loans declined 1.87% uh, of the total loan book. Now, asset quality in the individual loan book also was much stable. The lender's loans under moratorium declined from 27% of the total loan portfolio to about 22.6%. Now, the individual loan portfolio under moratorium stood at 16.6%, which is lower than the overall loan book. Now, HDFC stepped up the provisions, which improved provision coverage ratio to even 47% for stage 3 assets from 40% in the previous year. Now, while the sectoral concerns definitely exist, uh, HDFC's performance stands out and uh, it is a key beneficiary of the structural consolidation which is underway in the housing and the real estate financing business. Now, with funding being a constraint, many NBFCs and HFCs are seeing a slow growth and some are even vacating the wholesale lending business. Now, this is helping HDFC accelerate the market share gained here. HDFC's core lending business is getting valued at 1.3 times FY22 estimated book value, which is a significant discount to its historical average. Now, though the pandemic will definitely add to volatility in the quarterly earnings throughout FY21, the core performance of HDFC is likely to remain strong. Additionally, investors um, get exposure to its valuable subsidiaries and also associate companies say HDFC Bank, HDFC Live, HDFC AMC, most of which are listed and now have an equally strong track record. Now, it is a rarity to find quality financial service franchise and not just a housing finance play at reasonable valuations. Investors, therefore, could use this opportunity to buy into the stock.